Okay, so, um, all right, tell me, what's your name? My name is uh, Dominic. And what do you uh, believe about God? Well, I believe in God because what do I believe about God? Mm. I believe that once he roamed this, this world and that um, he's a very good man, isn't it? Good man? You believe yeah. God is, is a good man? Yeah. Okay, so who is God to you? What's his name? He's my father. He's your father, yeah. yeah. So what's his name? Jesus. Jesus, so yeah. you're a Christian? Yeah. Okay, are you a born again Christian or like, um, what is your faith? So tell me, like, if I was to ask you, how do you get to heaven? How what, do I get to heaven? Yeah, so what by, would you tell me? By obeying his rules, isn't it? So you believe that your work saved you? Yeah, of course, 100%. Okay, so can I say, like, so um, do you believe you're a good person? That, mm, well, God knows that I try my best to be a good person. And he knows that sometimes I can here and there, you know, but he knows I try my best. And every time when I go home at the end of the day, I have that prayer with him. Okay, so um, can I ask, have you ever read the Bible? I read the first two, three pages, but I heard that's a sin if you don't continue it. No, see, this is a thing. So you read um, Genesis, so have you read the story of creation? So, okay, well, when God created man, he yeah. made the first man, Adam. Um, and he breathed life into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. Well, he gave yeah, well, Adam. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, so he gave Adam a command, and he said to him, "The day you eat of that tree is the day that you die." Well, Adam, he disobeyed God. Yeah. He didn't. He he disobeyed, and because of that, because he disobeyed God, he had to leave Eden. Now, Adam was very sorry for what he'd done. He tried to cover up his shame. He tried to sew fig leaves together, but it wasn't enough. And God took an animal and covered his shame, but even that didn't reconcile him back to God. He had to leave Eden. And so what God did was he demonstrated through Abraham something that he was planning to do later on when he told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Um, and so this is what Jesus did. Because even though, you know, according to the standard of the world, you know, you might not be out stealing and, and, and hurting people per se, um, and you might not be as bad as some people, in the eyes of God, you're still a sinner. Yeah. You still fall short. 100%. So, you know, so for all your best efforts at trying to be good, so, you know, I don't know, like, what you do in your everyday life, you're still going to tell lies. Look at, you know, I don't know, like, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, that's adultery. I mean, that's, that, that, is, that is right, but I don't see the point in lying, first of all. Because, in my opinion, if you lie, I, I don't see the point in lying. Well, I agree with you. I, I lie and it's really, really bad. I don't do it. But my point is this. Everybody's done it. You can't say you've never lied. You've lied at least one time in your life, yeah? Yeah, of course. Okay, well, this is my point. Right, so that one lie, even though, you know, is, is probably like not even the tip of the iceberg when it concerns our sin. I don't think we understand seriously how sinful we are as human beings. I, I know I've done um, a lot of sins in my life. Okay. And, and I try my best to, to, I try my best to like keep it, keep it calm, you know? To, to not to not do what okay I, but because you've done a lot of sin and you say you know you try not to but you obviously you still do God can, can tries you, me sometimes I but know the, he tries me well the thing is you know it's not God doesn't tempt us so the Bible is very clear about that when you're tempted do not say that God is tempting me because God oh, yeah, cannot be tempted yeah, yeah. by evil alright so God is not tempting you okay but I, I would submit to you that there are lots of people that say, you know what, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, but they don't, they don't know him, they don't have relationship with Jesus, they haven't been born of his spirit, they haven't come to this place of repentance, and what I mean by that is you need to reach the end of yourself, you need to realise, uh, basically, you're a sinner. And in your, you've spent your entire life in rebellion. Yeah. So even though you say, you know what, I believe in God, 
you know, I have love for God. You don't actually know him. And I was like that, so don't think I'm trying to condemn or say anything bad about you. But when I was 18, I had an experience with God. I had an experience with God already four times. Yeah, so, but, you know, so it could be that God is calling you to himself and he hasn't actually saved you yet because that's what happened to me. Furthermore, I think yesterday I had an experience with God. I was on the bus and I was quite, I was quite angry because I had an argument with my parents, my brother, my I had an argument with my whole family and I was quite sad. So on the bus I was scrolling from my phone and my FIP page was a bit like sad in it. And I was feeling sad and I was feeling stressed, angry and my head was about to explode and I was like, God if you're here and if if I know you're you're here and just give me a sign, anything so I know for me to like relax, to like calm down. Give me a light or a bird to fly across or something. The next stop I stopped at a bus stop someone's door like house light open it, like just turned on and from then i was just like everything was just more relaxing well everything this is the thing um you know like god you know the bible says that um god is near to the broken hearted yes but um you know and obviously god loves you and he wants to be a father to you but in order for him to be that father for you to you I need to, you need to be born again yeah. and the way you do that is you need to come to a place of repentance you need to accept that you're a sinner in need of a savior i'm not saying that you you know that in order to, for you to be saved you have to confess all your sin or anything like that that's not what repentance is repentance literally means to change your mind and so you want god you want to have a relationship with god and so now you need to realize that you've spent your whole life in rebellion towards him by doing the things that you desire. Your life is about you and how you can make you happy instead of you, you know, coming to know who Jesus is. And, and then, then at the same time, for example, if you have to keep it like with Jesus every single second, right? And you have to like, not every single second, but you just got like have that mindset. If you're going to keep on talking by yourself in your head and like say, oh, Okay, now nah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to look at that person like this. I don't need to look at that person like this. Well, this is the thing. When you have Are the you not going to have a lot of thoughts in your head and just... No, because this is the thing. We are, when you come to faith in Jesus Christ, so at the moment, from what I can gather, you have... Um, it's, you know, like you verbally believe, but you haven't truly believed in your heart yet. And I'll tell you how to do that in a moment so that you can be saved and you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and you can be born again. But when, you, when Jesus saves you, when Jesus saves you by faith, not by works, okay? So you have to let go of any idea that you can be good enough to go to heaven because you can't be. And that was the whole point of me trying to highlight to you areas within yourself that wasn't good so that you could recognize that one, you are a sinner and two, that therefore you, you've got no hope of going to heaven based upon your good deeds, all right? Even if you were to go to church every single day and read your Bible every single day, it still would not make you a good person because of your sin. So you need to be forgiven for that sin and you need to be covered in the righteousness of Christ. And how do I do that? Well, you have to do that by faith. You have to believe in Jesus. And I mean, when I say believe, you have to come to this realization, yes, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. And then you put your faith and trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus is the only person I trust. That's the thing. I don't so, trust nobody else except that's good, for Jesus. That's good, that's good, that's good. So you now need to be born of his spirit. And so the way you do that is you need to believe in your heart, not that Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world and now you must be a good person. That, I believe, is one of the biggest deceptions in the world. Mm. It's one of the big deceptions in religion, like Catholicism or Jehovah Witness or Mormon. Like, they have a different Jesus anyway. But my point is this, religion will teach you, be good, do good works, that will get you to heaven, yeah? Right? So basically, but that's not God's way. The only way we can get there is through Jesus Christ. So you need to come to Jesus. First of all, you obviously believe he exists. That's great. He's alive. You believe he died on the cross for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day. That's great. That's what you need to do in order to be saved. Now, you have to believe not that Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world, but you need to look at yourself. Look at your sin. You know, you, I'm not talking about listing every single sin you've ever done. That's not how we get born again. But just realizing that you are a sinner. And then look at Jesus and look at what he did on the cross and then really look and think wow every sin i have ever committed was nailed to that cross 
all my sin, your personal sin, I'm talking about you, forget anybody else in this world, you personally, every sin that you have ever committed was nailed to that cross. And then, you know, and, and you've got to believe that. Really grasp that concept. And when you do that, and you're like, and then three days later, he rose again. He conquered sin and death and the devil. And through faith in Jesus Christ, I have eternal life. Not because I'm a good person, but because Jesus paid for my sins. Yes. And that's what you need to do. For you to receive salvation, you have to believe that. You have to accept, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going, oh, my life is just, you know, I, I'm of the world. I'm going downhill. Yeah, I'm of the world. I don't want to be of the world. I want to be of Christ. I want to be born of God's spirit. I want to be adopted into his family. And I cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, save me. Every single day I try to make the dots of how is this, how, what, how are we living on this world? Because there, there must have been one creator. Of course. The sun is not just sitting there. It's just sitting there. Of course. This galaxy, the multiverse is not just sitting there. This planet, we're not just floating for no reason. I don't believe in that Big Bang. Exactly. Because I don't believe there, in that. Exactly. For there because to be a creation, there has to be a creator. There has to be a creator. Mm -hmm. Parents, they give birth. Yeah. Give. God is real. Just Amen. Take that in, you Lord. It Amen. Is. God is real. And you know what? God loves you. I love him. And he Lord. loves you so much that he came into his creation in the person of Jesus Christ to reconcile you back to God so that you could live forever with him in paradise. You don't want to continue living a life of sin and rebellion and making it all about you. You live for pleasure. You want to have a good time. Exactly. You get with your friends. I don't know whether you smoke. I don't know whether you smoke weed. I don't know whether you get drunk. Yeah? But all of these things, they keep you separated from God. When you I used to smoke a lot of weed and I used to like do my stuff with, with I think we should just like it's okay, it's okay. Do you know what? There won't be one person who watches this apart from obviously unless they're an unbeliever. And even they will be worse than you mm. because they're unbelievers. Every single person, including myself, we've all got a testimony. Okay, I'm we've all got a testimony of, of how Jesus saved us and what he's delivered us from. You know, we've all got a testimony. We've all got a past. Jesus said, I came not to save the righteous, but to save sinners. You know, and Paul, he said he was the worst of sinners. I would agree with him in my own life and say that was me included. You know, and Jesus has transformed me and he's still transforming me. I'm not perfect. I'm only perfect through the righteousness of Christ. So when God sees me, he sees Jesus because he gives me his righteousness. So when Jesus takes your sin away, he imputes his perfect righteousness. So our standing before the Father is not in our righteous deeds. And even our works come from the Holy Spirit. So no one can boast before God and say that they're good or that they have anything good to offer God because they don't. Everything in us is from him. And so, you know, but it's the Holy Spirit in us that then enables us to live godly and bear fruit and do good work. So, you know, no one is good in God's eyes and no one can judge you and say, wow, that person's terrible. Yes, we're all terrible, all including us, me yeah. and all everybody here. And we all need Jesus to save us. There's all not us. one good person in this planet except Jesus Christ. Except him, so don't yeah. be ashamed of anything. I'm not ashamed. But, be, but come to God humbly. And what I mean is by that, admit that you're a sinner in need of a saviour. Cry out to Jesus. I Tell am a sinner. I know I am a sinner. And I, I admit it. There's no... I, I, I used to do... I used to smoke weed. I used to steal weed. I, I used to do a lot of crazy stuff. I used to see demons in my room, sleep paralysis, all of that. I had enough at one point. I said to myself, I need to change my life around. But and you can't do it. Jesus has to do it. You've got to have that sin taken away from you. Because even though you've still done all that, and maybe you're not doing those things yeah, anymore, but, but... He needs my help as well. No, 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 no. This is what happens. When you believe in Jesus Christ, okay? So you can you can stop doing that, but unless you be born again, that's not going to make any difference, all right? Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So when Jesus saves you, Jesus will give you a new heart. And when he gives you a new heart, he puts his spirit in you, and he will be the one to then enable you to live godly and walk in his ways. So... Your stopping will be a work of the Holy Spirit. Your transformation will be a work of the Holy Spirit, but only after Jesus saves you. But before you can have any good works that will be acceptable to God, you first have to be born again. That comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So do you believe that if when you die, you're going to resurrect or like yes. another body? Yes. 
yes. upon a dog or so. No, no, I don't believe in reincarnation. The Bible says it's custom for man to die once and then the judgment. But when Jesus saves you and he brings you back to life again, he's going to give you a new glorified body. <laughs> so we'll have a new glorified body that will never get sick and never die and never hunger and never grow That's going to be in heaven, isn't it? Well, it will be in eternity. So we could be, you know, when Jesus comes back, those of us that believe in him, that are waiting for him to come back, we'll be raised up with him and we'll receive our new glorified bodies then. And so it's, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to receive that in heaven. It means that we're going to receive it in eternity. So that could be when he comes back, uh, you know, I believe that he hasn't given anybody their glorified bodies yet. Yeah, I, he'll I, give them when he comes back at the first come in, or he'll give them at the end at the second. And I feel come like in. his coming is very close. Yes, it is, and we're living in some very dark times, it's very, and we're going to see, close. we're going to see, um, we're going to see basically a lot of wickedness increase in the world. Yeah, where it's going to get worse and worse and worse right up until Jesus comes back. Um, and when is but he going to come out? Well, no one knows the day or hour. How is he going to? He's coming back through the clouds of heaven, that's what he said. In the same way he ascended is the same way he comes back. He's going to step on the Mount of Olives and then he's going to go out to fight against all Israel's enemies. The so. last time that it was the end of the world, it was with fire. Well, no, was no. It, or was it water? It was water, it was a flood. So now it's going to be fire. Fire, that's right. God promised that he would never flood the earth again, but he's going to destroy the earth with fire. Yeah. So, you know, but... You don't, you don't have to be one of those people that perish in your sin. You have to be born again of God's spirit. You have to recognize your sinfulness, which you do. And then you have to recognize that you can't make up to God anything you've done. You can't pay God back through your good deeds, through your efforts, through your trying to be a good person. It's commendable that you no longer do that stuff anymore, but you still need that sin to take away from you. Do you see what I mean? So you still need to be forgiven for that sin and you still need to be washed clean because you're still stained by that sin. And so Jesus has to wash you in his blood and then reconcile you back to God through faith in himself by giving you the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can do that is when you cry out to Jesus and you say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. But it's got to come from your heart because you say that you say, I believe I have this faith. And it then does you come from my heart because he knows it comes from my heart. You... But it's not true repentance. See, the thing is, I would have said myself, that when I was 18, I had this experience and this encounter with God where uh, something happened, you know, and I was, was basically, I was invited to a church, short story, I'll try to give you a short version of it, but I was invited to a church and everybody in this church said to pray for a gift. I had never prayed, I was a rebel, like a, a rebellious teenager, and I felt really uncomfortable about being in this church, I didn't feel like I belonged, I felt like a hypocrite, but I said to the Lord, okay, just give me faith. That's it. I was scared. I didn't want to ask God for anything. I was afraid. And so he basically, um, I opened my eyes, tears came, I was, uh, uncontrollable tears. I could not stop them. And I knew, obviously, I knew everything they were telling me about Jesus was true. I believed it. I spent my entire life believing in Jesus after that, but I still did not understand the gospel. My eye understanding of the gospel was Yes, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. I would have even have said, yes, Jesus died for me. But in my heart, I still believed I had to be a good person. And that going to church made me good. Doing sacraments, because I ended up stupidly becoming a Catholic, made me good. Like, this is what I believed. And it wasn't until Jesus brought me to the end of myself and I realized that I couldn't continue to live on the way that I had, that I finally cried out to him and said, Lord, help me. And that was it. I was born again. From then on, I was a new You're creature, a new person, yes. and for, that was the work of the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy um, Jesus, changed my heart, changed my life. I need, to, I, I need when I have that one connection with Him. That one time, He, He wants to change my life. But you have to cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, help me. But you've got to mean it. I do, yes. But you mean was, it at the time. I was crying on the bus yesterday. But like, only because your situation's bad. You've got to really come to that end of yourself. Mm. Your situation's bad. When your situation's good, you don't, you're just living for you. Getting on with your life, doing whatever you want. You've got to really come to that place of, I don't want to live this way anymore. And then cry out and say, Lord, help me. 
and then put your complete faith and trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of sin. It's not just about trusting Jesus, believing him to be real and then, you know, it's about a real relationship. It's about believing in him for the forgiveness of your sin, trusting in him for salvation, understanding that there's no other way to be saved except through Jesus Christ, not through your deeds, not through your efforts, and not just when something's bad, but literally call on it and say, Lord, save me. Lord, please save me. You don't have to do anything except believe in Jesus. You say you believe, believe in there. Because our hearts are deceitful and desperately sick. Lots of people, they have faith with their lips. They believe with their mouth, but they don't believe in their heart. They say they do, but their hearts are deceived in there because they still think I've got to be good or, you know, or it's about them or they don't really understand the gospel message. And the gospel is that Jesus is God and that he died for our sin, was buried and raised on the third day. That's the gospel. And then when you believe that in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus will save you. So the gospel is to believe with everything inside of you, with all your heart. Believe with your heart and Jesus died for me, was buried and raised on the third day. My sin was nailed to that cross. Really mold that over, pray on it, think about it, call on Jesus, say, Lord, save me. See, I would have, that's, that's idolatry. That's forbidden in the Bible. Huh? That's a rosary, rosemary bead. Are you an, a Catholic? Yeah. Okay, well, this is where you're going wrong. I used to be Catholic, but oh, I'm no, not I'm anymore. Orthodox. Okay, well, this is where you're still going wrong. Religion is not of God. Religion says join church, be a good person, do sacraments, prayers to Mary. All of this stuff is forbidden in the Bible. You have to be born again. That doesn't come through water baptism. That comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus has to breathe the Holy Spirit into you. And this is the reason why you probably haven't had your born again moment because you're still trusting in other things like maybe Mary. I don't know if you pray to Mary. Never. Don't do it. And that is forbidden. The Bible says in... The only person I pray to and I've been taught to pray to is Jesus. That's, that's it. it. Amen. And that's what I would pray for you to continue that's to do. That's the only person I've been praying okay. to my whole life. And his father, God, but well, no one knows God. Well, they're, well they're, they're one. So you pray to the Father through Jesus, or you can pray to Jesus directly. It doesn't matter. They, they're one and the same. So yeah, you, pray to, you pray to the Father, you pray to Jesus. It's pray a, to it's Jesus, a long, pray to the it's Father. A long thing. No, it's, a... it's, it's, you know what? It, it's, um, Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. So if you talk to Jesus, you're talking to the Father. They're one and the same. You know, no one could go to the Father except through Jesus Christ. But I want to... The real Father, the, 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 the real creator of Jesus, that's, Jesus did not, is not created. Jesus is not created. So Jesus is God, yeah? And Jesus created for himself, God created for himself a physical flesh body. And so that spirit inside that physical flesh body was fully God. So he was fully man, fully God. He has two natures, fully human, fully God. All right, so Jesus was God in human flesh. That's who Jesus is. So God came, took on flesh, God became a man, but God always existed. He still exists in eternity past. He will never die. His flesh died for three days, but his spirit didn't. Okay? Amen. All right, so how do you get born again then? That's the Gospel of John, you can keep that. Tell me how you get born again. You get born again by having faith in God, in what Jesus. Do, and tell me what you need to believe in your heart that I'm a sinner and that I need to, I need to, I don't need to, Jesus has to. That you're a sinner, but what do you need to believe about Jesus in your heart? That he is the creator of us, he, he's the one that died for our sins, he's the one that we need to focus to. So basically, you need to believe in your heart that Jesus is God, that he died for your sin, was but buried and raised that. on the third day. But I, but have you really believed that? You say you believe that, yes, but I does your lifestyle been... demonstrate your faith in Jesus Christ? Have For you like three months it has. No, but, uh, well, that's a, it has to be a work of God, not you. If you think stopping this and stopping that saves you, you're not trusting in Jesus. It's Jesus that saves you, then Jesus enables you to stop doing that. I'm going to read this. Huh? I'm going to read this now. All right, so you, how, you get born again through faith in Jesus Christ, believing that he is God, believing that he died for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day. When you believe that in your heart, and I mean truly believe it in your heart, 
and confess with your mouth, then Jesus will save you. Lots of people say they believe in Jesus, but they still believe in works. They still believe they have to be a good person. They still believe that stopping all this sin will make is, is when Jesus will save them. If you believe you have to stop sinning for Jesus to save you, then you're believing in works. You have to come to Jesus as you are, you, with your, bring your wretched self to Jesus right now as you are, cry out to him and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, believing that he paid for every sin that you have ever committed, was buried and raised on the third day, and that is salvation for you. All right, so it's not just about saying you believe and believing in here, you've got to believe it, really believe it in here. And if you believe it in here, Jesus will save you, and Jesus will transform you, and enable you to stop doing the things that he hates, and enable you to live godly. But that work will be the work of the Holy Spirit, not a work of you, all right? So you're not saved by what you do, you're only saved by believing and trusting in what Jesus has done for you, all right? So call on Jesus from your heart. Believe that he was buried and raised on the third day, and Jesus will transform you. We'll recognize that you're going the wrong way, and then cry out to Jesus and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Okay? All right, okay. What's your name? Stefan. Stefan. I pray for you, Stefan, okay? I pray that the Lord save you and give you a new life. All right? All right, God bless.